Why, good morning. Welcome to worship here at the Presbyterian Church of Sweet Hollow. It is such a joy to have you all here with us on this bright, warm, uh, I'm sorry, warm, not the right word, cold, chilly, <coughs> windy, yes, it's a windy Sunday. Uh, this is the last day of, of our lectionary year, and so everyone is invited to stick around after worship today um, for, for a time of decorating the church for the season. And uh, refreshments will be had by all. Um, it is my great joy to also welcome to worship this day Reverend Joan Fink, who's going to provide a message for us today. As you're all very familiar with Joan, so it's great to uh, have Joan here with us this day. And it's a special day because, um, if I recall correctly, the date is November 10th. Is that correct? November 10th, 20 years ago, Joan got ordained uh, uh, into ministry. <clears throat> and for us pastors, you know, getting ordained is a lot like having a birthday or having an anniversary. Because it's, it's only, something that only happens once in your lifetime. And it's a day that is super special to us. And we build entire celebrations around the day that we get ordained. Um, so it is a joy that Joan approached me and said, hey, I want to spend time with a congregation that means something to me for my 20th anniversary of her ordination. And I'm like, yes, I get a Sunday off. <laughs> but no, no, truly, this is, this is part of our celebration uh, for this day. Um, Joan, can I actually stand for just a minute? Because on top of having, on top of having the decorating the church, we're also having a little reception uh, party for you as well. So the, you you are invited to stick around for. Well, I'm going to offer a prayer too, if okay. that's all right. So that's all good. All right. So I'm going to offer a prayer, and then I'm going to have Carol Kyle come up here. So let me offer this prayer for you. Almighty and merciful God, you built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and you instituted the office of ministry of word and sacrament so that the apostolic and prophetic work might continue throughout the ages. So we offer to you our thanks for Reverend Joan Fink and for the ways that she worked in ministry here at our little church with a big heart. We give thanks for her time with us that you have ordained, time committed to praying for and seeking to serve the people of this church and this community with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. Continue to bless Joan as she carries out your calling for her, faithfully in the power of your Spirit. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. And to honor this occasion, we also have something a little special. Yeah, I love and appreciation. <laughs> now, there is a card, but I think that there are kind of some folks who haven't had the opportunity to sign it yet. I think so if we will have it um, inside when we do the reception later, okay? okay? So everyone sign the card. If you haven't already, stick around later. Get the card signed for Pastor Joan here. So. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of plan is that? You're right, Caleb. It is an orchid. Learn from Curious George. George. <laughs> <laughs> so... Thank, Thank you, you so much. and bless you. Thank you, all of you. I love being back here. And I get brought my son, my son in law, and my daughter, Jill and Jay. So, uh, they were in the gag, just so you were aware. So, you <laughs> so um, some other announcements for today. I know Jean's got a couple things she would like to share. So, Jean? So again, just a reminder to, to continue to donate for the toy drive. We have the basket in the hallway, which is 
pretty full already. We have the can in the back as well, so continue to give. And be sure to pick up your, your boxes of envelopes as you need that. So thank you, Gene, uh, for that. Uh, other announcements you'll find in your bulletin, just a reminder, sign up for the Christmas tea party. Whether you want to be a host for the table or whether you want to be a guest for a table. And I got wonderful news that we had 14 people from our Wednesday Seniors group sign up as well. Um, did anyone want to say anything more about the Christmas Tea Party as far as an announcement goes? Jill or? I have more invitations and host and hostess um, flyers like what you would be responsible for if you decide to host a table. I have them in my car. I can just grab them if you need them. All right, so see, see Jill if you got questions about being a host or a co-host because you, you can partner up with somebody to co-host the table as well. So, uh, and if I would like to just, if people want to just come as an individual, that's totally fine. We have tables. We don't have to host. Just come and enjoy it. Fantastic. So um, you'll find other announcements again in your bulletins and the inserts. Are there other announcements for the good of the community before we begin our worship this day? No. All right. I invite you to stand in body or spirit. We're going to sing our opening song or song of preparation. It's an insert in your bulletins. It's soon and very soon. You're going to see the game.
seated. Please join me now in this time of confession. Trusting in God's goodness to us, let us confess our sin before God and one another. O oh God, too often we close the doors of our lives to your openness. We slam the door shut on those who need you and need us most. Help us to open the door for the sick, the lost, the broken, the poor, the forgotten, the persecuted, and those on the margins. True One, give us the key to be instruments of justice and joy in this world. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of the Gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Jessalyn, I know, has been counting the number of days down to the special day. What special day happens this week? Thanksgiving. Very good. That's right. So what I want you to do is I wrote this this way because I want us all to try to think of something that we are thankful for, but begins with the particular letters here. So, um, so Jessalyn, since you... It, it is an acrostic. You're right. Very good. You can learn about that. So, good job, Caleb. So, Jocelyn, what is something that you're thankful for that might begin with the letter T? My friend Tyler. Your friend Tyler. That's awesome. We're going to write down Tyler here. Very good. All right, Caleb, how about a letter? You have something for letter H, Christopher? What's that? What begins with an H that you're really thankful for? You're thankful for hmm? <laughs> hmm? Oh. 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 In a house. He's thankful for his house. With a little prompting. Caleb, you got the letter A. <clears throat> what are you thankful for? You got the letter A. Apples. Apples. Okay, very good. All right, now we're going we're to bring the congregation in. I want somebody to give me a something for letter N. Neighbors. Neighbors. Suki, you're reading my mind. I was going to say Nigel right away. <laughs> okay, Nigel's too. Yes, we're going to put Nigel on here. You betcha. Yes. I okay. Let's listen, listen, listen to that. Okay. How about the letter K? Kids. Kids. Awesome. How about the letter that? Y? You. 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 All of you. Oh, I was going to say that. How about the letter O? Okay, I have no idea. Okay, he doesn't have one. Oh! Opportunity. Opportunity. Thank you, Carol. That's a good one. Other Carol. Yep. <laughs> you have one for you? What is it, Christopher? Jessalyn? You. You! Well, you begins with Y, but close. I've got us. 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 Yes. 
Unique gifts. What's that? Us. Us. Us and unique gifts. There we go. I want Hey, you guys did an awesome job filling this out. I have one. What's that, Caleb? Last one. Uh, me too. <laughs> Chris will say it. Okay, Chris. Uh, I don't even remember. Unique with love. Unique with love. All right, good job. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> this is just a, a few of the things we're thankful for, right, that God gives us. Well, when it comes to Thanksgiving Day, I hope that we say a prayer that we offer great thanks for all the wonderful things that God gives us, even the things we don't list on here, right? Turkey. So let's, let's, yes, we're thankful for turkey. So, all right, so let us say a prayer like an echo, okay? So come here. Here, say a prayer like an echo. Dear God, Dear God we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks again. We give you thanks again. We give you thanks many times over. For all the gifts that you give us. For all the gifts that you give us. Amen. Amen. All right, good job today, guys. Good job. Good job. Go ahead, sit down. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, I put a Bible down here somewhere. <laughs> They're all over. All right. Now, because, because Pastor Joan picked out our passages for today... I have to admit that I didn't uh, mark where to, where to read it, so. <laughs> but I think I found it. <clears throat> All right. Um, the prophet Isaiah has so much wonderful, sound advice for the people of Israel. Um, so here are the words that we hear from this prophet uh, from chapter 22, verses 20 through 22. On that day I will call my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, and will clothe him with your robe and bind your sash on him. I will commit your authority to his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And listen here. I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David. He shall open, and no one shall shut. He shall shut, and no one shall open. This ends our first reading. Our gospel reading is from the book of Revelation, single, singular, most people say Revelations, but um, this is John's revelation to the church. It actually starts in the beginning, John, to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and was and is to come. <coughs> to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These are the words of the Holy One, the True One, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. Look, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power and yet you have kept my words and have not denied my name. I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but are lying. I will make them come and bow down before your feet and they will learn that I have loved you. Because you have kept my word of patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have, so that no one may seize your crown. If you conquer, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. You will never go out of it. I will write on you the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from God out of heaven and my own new name. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. 
before the sermon, or maybe at the part of it, I want to hold up this picture. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask Pastor, he would just pass this around. I want everybody to see this little girl. I have more pictures that my daughter gave me this morning that are just as great. And the reason I wanted you to all see it, remember when we were pl praying for Clarita? Yes. yes. That's Clarita. Wow. Oh. Oh. She, for those of you who are, just as a recap, she has had how many brain surgeries? Two or three. She's got MS. She's got so many problems, has had so many health issues since the day she was born. Been in hospitals. And I mean, the pictures are amazing because she's always laughing. And my daughter and son in law took um, like a, pictures of her, and she's just so happy. She's just walking around, uh, not walking around, she can't walk. She's got special chairs and she's starting to learn. They said, didn't they say she would never speak? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. She would never be able to talk. And now I heard the video and she's talking. Um. And um, I still think that the doctors and all had great uh, effect on this, but the prayers, the prayers really helped because she came where everybody said she wouldn't. She couldn't do the, these things and she's doing them. So I just wanted you to see that picture. Thank you. Well, the Bible has a lot of stories about doors being closed and windows being opened or other doors being opened right after a door was closed. You've all heard that expression. When God closes a door, he opens a window, or he opens another door. Um, and the, a lot of the stories, when I started looking, a lot of the stories in the Bible, really that's what it was. I mean, St. Paul, certainly on the road to Damascus, um, God <laughs> stopped him in his tracks and then gave him a mission which he went on, all the missions. He certainly had a new window, a new door open. Uh, Moses, Moses was at Jethro's uh, sheep. He was tending them, that was his job. And the way I read it in the Bible, he seems pretty content. He wasn't looking to go and be the hero that rescued his people, but God called him and gave him a new door, a new place to go something that God wanted him to do, and that's part of what we also get when we get a new door. Sometimes it's God calling us to do something, and we have to be listening. To me, the biggest one story of this in the Bible of a new window opening is the story of Joseph, the one that um, Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber did. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Code was based on the story in Genesis of Joseph, the 11th son of Jacob and Leah, was Leah, right? Yeah, Leah. Um, 11th son, he was his father's favorite and his father made him this fancy coat. Problem with Jacob is he'd have the, these dreams and then he'd tell his, his brothers about the dreams and they were all where they were bowing, his brothers would bow down to Joseph, and you might guess that um, brothers got kind of jealous of this. And one day when they were out in the field, they actually um, wanted to get rid of him. He was thrown in a hole. He was then traded to some um, people going by and taken to Egypt, where he also had a lot of problems because Potiphar's wife accused him of coming on to her, when actually it was the reverse. He ended up in jail, and through all of this, he never gave up on God. I really think I would have said, what are you doing? Get me out of this jail, why am I here? But Joseph didn't. 
And he ended up rising to be the second person under the Pharaoh in Egypt. Very um, strong, that, that, that's really a big door to open. When God closes a door, he opens a window. We might be surprised to find out what we have taken as the wisdom of God is really dialogue from a musical. In the sound of music, Maria wants to be a nun. The Reverend Mother tells how she was first go and take care of, be the governess, taking care of seven children. And she sees this as an unnecessary interruption. She's really not happy about it. And then she ends up, as I said, when God closes the door, in this case, she was going in the, into the convent, but he gave her a, a window to go through, and she ended up with marriage, children, escaping from the Nazis over into another country. When God closes a door, he opens a window. This phrase is most commonly used for reassurance in the face of missed opportunity. When you lose your job because the company is downsizing, people say, when God closes a door, he opens another one. What they mean is that the job wasn't good enough for you anyway, and you're sure to find another job that's even better. For me, one of the problems of that assumption is the question, do we always need better? Do we always need more? I listen to Wall Street financial reports, and it always seems to be the search for profits just a little bit higher, sales, whatever. It's always got to be compared, and it's got to be higher than it was before. A father at a recent online conference was saying he was so proud because his kids got more than he did. That was his goal, and he was really proud of it and talking about it a lot. And everybody agreed with him. Do we always need to top the last generation? Are we the guilty ones when we ask what's wrong with the young people and why they are so spoiled or demanding? We often look at the numbers of a church. Did the attendance grow? Do we have new members? All well and good, all great. But is that what we measure a church? Or do we ask if there's learning and spiritual growth that's been elevated and is thriving? When God closes a door, he opens a new one. At face value, the statement seems simple and true, but much is left to subjective interpretation. How do I evaluate what's a door or window and what's not a door and what's not a window? What if there are multiple doors and windows? How do I know who it is that's opening and closing it? Isn't it possible that Satan could be obstructing our path to something and opening a window to something outside the will of God? And that's where prayer comes in. That's where listening, that's where being open. Other problems with the door window statement, as with much bumper sticker theology, are underlying assumptions and limitations. Can we really walk through all the open doors or windows that present themselves to us? God is sovereign. He is always active and ruling, but as human beings, we often forget the sovereignty of God. When things are going according to our plan, when God is opening doors that we want it open, we feel as if we're in charge of our lives. It is in seasons of closed doors that we feel the sudden weight that we're not in control, God is. The closed door therefore serves as a God to teach us who is in charge. As the Catholic blogger Lashanda says, Praise God, we're not in control. Praise God, we don't have to hold the world in our hands. Praise God that the creator of the universe has granted us permission to cast our anxiety on him because he cares for us. Closed doors do not mean that God has forsaken you or denied you something that was meant for you. Closed doors sanctify Christians 
Sanctification is denying you something you think you want or need in exchange for something better. Christ. Don't try to open closed doors. Doors in your life, whether open or closed, ultimately serve as an opportunity to reflect the glory of God. God is glorified in his creation, no matter how impressive creation thinks he is. It is. Trust that no matter where your life is headed, if you put your faith and trust in God, God will be glorified. You are doing exactly what you were created to do, even with closed doors. Many doors close so that we can be present where we need to be. Many of you know the story of <coughs> me waiting to be ordained in the Diocese of Albany. I had been accepted for ordination and had resigned from my accounting job. I had collected things like toasters, tablecloths, etc. to bring up north to make a new home. When I discovered that I wasn't being ordained because one of the parishioners decided to convince the bishop that I was going up to be ordained and then flying back to Long Island, he decided not to ordain me and I ended up without ministry and without a paycheck. As it turns out, my mother got sick shortly after. The doctors told me there was nothing more they could do for her. I had to spend a lot of time meeting with doctors. I was at her bedside almost daily. My youngest son had an accident at work and needed help with daily skills and weekly, um, daily therapy appointments. And then the court assigned me my two nieces, who were six and eight. They were to live with me for five months while their parents got their act together. So I ran to the school. I ran to, to, to the nursing home for my mom. I ran my son to therapy, to, to doctors. And then at night, when we would <coughs> sit down, we would, they would start the teasing. My son, who was in his 20s then, would say, Mom, can you also cut my steak? <laughs> His hand was like this in a cage, and he couldn't do it. I certainly not have, could not have cut up my son's meat, visited my mom daily, and showed up for Meet the Teacher Day. If I was living in a town near the Canadian border, God put me where I needed to be. He closed a door, and it hurt. I must say, I, I was better why, God, did you make me go through all the hoops to get, even just to be on the list to be ordained, and then nothing? It saved me a lot of eight-hour drives down the throughway to come back to, to my family. So I, get, so I certainly was thankful for that. I guess I could sum up this sermon with a message that I could never have gotten through all of that. Without God's help, there was a good five months of this with my mother and these two girls. We need to learn to trust God, listen for his lead, and accept. Go through the window that he might open for you, or the door, whichever it is. But we need to listen, and we need to be willing, be ready. And I was ordained. It wasn't even a loss. But at the time, it sure seemed it. It just seemed so, I don't know, ugly, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And now I look back and I realize what a blessing, what a blessing it was. He closed the door, he opened another one, and here I am, and I love it. Thank you, amen. amen. Let us continue our worship as Jason offers us a song to reflect on Pastor Jones' message.
Again, thanks to Joan for her message and her sharing today, and Jason for another beautiful piece. Friends, as we come to this time of prayer, are there joys or concerns that we'd like to share for the good of the community today? Joe. Um, Arlene Richel, who is a member of our church, and she also used to work in the town, she passed away last Monday. Um, she was, after she left the town, she had like a mental breakdown, but she ended up with Alzheimer's and was in the nursing home across from Walt Whitman. But she only had hospice for like three days, so at least she wasn't suffering for any longer. But she passed away last Monday, so I just want to have prayers for her family and everything. Absolutely. Prayers for the Mitchell family as they, they grieve the loss. Uh, and, and may they know peace, love, and comfort during this time. She's a great lady. Uh, thank you for sharing. Appreciate that. We will definitely hold that in prayer. Any others to share? Yes, Joan. Good to see you. Um, prayers for the families who lost children in the um, University of Virginia and in Ohio that were murdered. Indeed. Uh, as violence has continued to permeate our society. Uh, prayers for those families, for victims of shootings and stabbings. And, uh, may, may they know love and comfort and uh, hopefully find some justice in the process as well. So thank you, Joan. Oh, prayers for my husband, Bob, who's in the hospital awaiting the surgery. Indeed, we will lift Bob in prayer and, it's, and you as well. We pray for God to touch the medical team that they have a successful surgery, that the pacemaker takes well, and it regulates as it needs to. So, thank you so much for sharing. Any others? Jessica. Um, prayers for medical nurses um, struggling with many overlapping symptoms and no one seems to know what's causing them. Um, and then it's becoming quite bothersome. So, I'm seeing multiple specialists. So, prayers for Jessica. She's suffering through many different physical ailments at this time. So, prayers for answers to that and that alleviation to the emotional and mental stress that goes with those ailments. Jim. Happy to see that the motors are back in their seats. Indeed. We're glad, <laughs> glad to see. And we're glad to have so many people in, in worship this, this day. It's a joy to have the space filled as such. Joan's eyes got uh, huge up here. She saw how full it was. So, Glad to see everyone here this day. So, uh, any others? Jean. I have to ask for prayers for my neighbor Sadie. She uh, had a, an episode and she's back in the hospital. And uh, so. I don't know what's wrong, but at 102, <laughs> she's still hanging in there. Yes. And also <laughs> prayers for Chris, who's continuing having problems walking because of her infection in the legs. So prayers for, for and both Chris and Sadie are neighbors of, of Jean, so we definitely continue to lift Sadie in prayer, especially now she's in the hospital. And prayers that uh, Chris, as she's been struggling after the surgery and whatnot, that she finds what's going on with the infection, that they may find healing and comfort for her and Returns to her, uh, her normal, uh, the sense of normalcy. So, yes. Any others to share this day? I'm just going to check. Oh, yes, Melissa. Uh, Joy's, uh, my son, our son, Anthony's home. Yay! And I have two. Through some car, uh, his car is still a bad but he's home. All right. <laughs> well, glad, glad Anthony is home safely and uh, uh, prayers for. It's a good time for the holidays together. And that's a, that's a prayer for us all to carry. Is thanks uh, for, for this holiday week, for a time where you get to celebrate, rejoice with whoever you're celebrating and rejoicing with. That you may know some peace and fun and an opportunity to give thanks for all the good things in your life. So, yes, and we're going to add Clarita onto our list here as well. So, I'm going to try and do this without knocking the candle over. Clarita's picture up there for you. So prayers for Clarita and her continued struggles. May, may she continue to exude the joy that we see in the picture while having a full and vibrant life, whatever that may look like for her. Yes. 
and for uh, it's we, we for our family friend Deb Todd. She's a second mother for Jessica and I, uh, essentially. So um, she just had an emergency appendectomy. So for her continued recovery, and she's and also a cancer survivor. Took her like as well. four days. She had multiple infections. So yeah. Okay. She's finally home. Yeah, so she's finally home recovering after having multiple infections related to that surgery. So, continue to pray. Um, I'm going to ask Carol to come on up front while we sing our prayer song. <laughs> So, um, as it applies to uh, Clarita and others in our lives, Lord, help us and we thank you for making the impossible possible. Help us to be instruments of your peace in our very troubled and divisive world. Help us to comfort and console and to give thanks in every circumstance for the signs of your love guiding us. We give thanks this Thanksgiving week for the fellowship found in this congregation, for Pastor Jones' ministry and friendship, for Pastor Wade and Jessica and their family, for the guidance of those who came before us here, and all those who continue to make us a vibrant and blessed place to live. <clears throat> Hear us as we join in prayer for those known to us and for those kept in the silence of our hearts. Our prayers pour out for all who mourn. Families with us here this morning, we join the Farahat family in prayers as they mourn the life of Richie. We join in healing prayers for all who continue to seek healing. For Rick and Linda Martin, the road has been very long. Bring them strength and comfort. Bring healing to Anne and Linda, to Kate and Jane, to Lynn and Teddy, Mike and Chris, to Deb and Shirley and Dana and Dan and Deb. Bring peace and hope for all who shoulder the weight of concern for loved ones and friends. As we pray for, for Sadie and also for Al, for Sean, for Jim and Mike and Chris, thank you for the prayers offered up this morning. We pray especially that Bob's heart surgery, pacemaker surgery goes well. We pray with joy for seeing Clarita with a huge smile on her face for those very suffering. Help us, Lord. Help us and show us the way. We join in thanksgiving for all the families, members far, but near to us this week, whether in their presence, <laughs> over the uh, internet or whatever, we just give thanks for the reason to gather and a reminder to give thanks. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. <coughs>
Friends, let us continue in a spirit of prayer. We hold fast to you, O God, in faith, knowing that your word is our truth and that your promise is sure. As we hear these prayers of our hearts this day, and so we hold fast to you, God. We thank you. We praise you. For you alone are holy and worthy of our praise. And we are grateful for the knowledge that you love each person and will care for them with your mercy and your tenderness, reminding us to keep those dear ones in our prayers and to care for them in your precious name. We give thanks that in Christ you promised the gift of eternal life and that those who no longer walk among us now walk with you completely. So Lord, we hold fast to you, only to you, for you alone are the redeemer and perfecter of our faith. So that this day and this week, as we step into our lives and we claim our faith as an essential part of identity, we remember the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, out of God's goodness and grace and thanks, out of all the gifts that we have received in our lives, we owe thanks to God. So, in response to God's goodness and generosity to us, let us give thanks by sharing our gifts for the work and ministry of this church through this people. Let us bring our gifts to God. Friends, you are welcome to bring your gifts and place them in the basket, placed at the table in the back uh, at any time. You are also welcome to give online through our website or through our Venmo option as well. Uh, let us give thanks uh, for the gifts that we bring in. even as your will is done. And all God's people said. Amen. Uh, as we come to the close of worship today, I invite you again to stand in body or spirit as you are able. Our final hymn comes from our blue hymnals, number 293. This is my Father's world. <laughs>
go in peace, looking for those doors that are going to open, giving us a chance to share the love of Christ, the strength of God. So go in peace, go in love, go in strength, and bring it out to the world. Amen. Please know that you are all invited to stick around for reception afterwards, as well as you can continue to play Jesus. <laughs> as well as the opportunity to decorate the church. Thanks to Frank and Maureen for bringing all the supplies downstairs. So we're ready to get started when you are. Wow. Oh, I understand. <laughs>